Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about venlafaxine or Effexor. And this is in response to one of our viewers who asked us to make a video specifically about this medication. If you would like us to make a video for you, drop that video idea down in the comment section below and that video will be coming your way. So today we're going to talk about venlafaxine or Effexor and the top five things that you need to know about venlafaxine. Vaccine. Starting with number one, what is venlafaxine? Well, venlafaxine or Effexor is an antidepressant and it acts on serotonin and norepinephrine. It's classified as a serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, which increases serotonin and norepinephrine in your body. Now, in dosages less than 225 milligrams, it acts more like an SSRI or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, and dosages greater than 225 milligrams, it acts as that SNRI and has that norepinephrine action in combination with the serotonin. That norepinephrine action actually indirectly increases dopamine in the prefrontal cortex, which makes it very useful for the treatment of depression. Venlafaxine comes in immediate release formulation and extended release formulations. However, it is more common to use the extended release formulation since venlafaxine has a very short half-life and the immediate release is typically not well tolerated. And so then what is venlafaxine used for? So venlafaxine was FDA approved in the United States in 1993. It is FDA approved for the treatment of major depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, and panic disorder. Off-label uses of venlafaxine are for the treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, and neuropathic pain, such as fibromyalgia and diabetic neuropathy. So how long does it take for it to work? Well, just like all the other antidepressants, this isn't a quick fix and venlafaxine will typically take anywhere from two to four weeks before you start to see effects. And this will be at the therapeutic dosages of anywhere from 75 milligrams up to 225 milligrams. In some patients, it may take up to eight weeks before those therapeutic effects are noticed. So if you're taking venlafaxine and you've been taking it for eight weeks, you're at a therapeutic dose and you're not seeing any benefits at all, then talk to your doctor and discuss perhaps maxing the dose up to 375 milligrams or changing medications. And if you're gonna change medications, you definitely need to do so under the direction of your provider. And so that leads us to the question of, is venlafaxine addicting? No, venlafaxine is not addicting and neither are any of the antidepressants as we discussed in this video. However, it is one of the worst antidepressants to come off of. It actually causes the most severe withdrawal symptoms of any of the antidepressants. And so it is crucial that you do not abruptly stop this medication and you taper off of it very slowly. Also, I'd advise that you only use venlafaxine for six months up to a year max and then taper off of it. If you need to be on an antidepressant longer, consider switching to an antidepressant that has a longer half-life such as fluoxetine. And when you do taper off of it, you're gonna have to taper it over at least three months and sometimes even longer, depending on how long you've been on the medication. And so what are those side effects and contraindications? 
Well, the side effects with all antidepressants are very similar in the fact that they cause a lot of GI upset and symptoms within the first week of you adjusting to the medication because we have serotonin in our gut and that serotonin is activated when we start taking antidepressants. The most common symptom you're gonna see is nausea, but due to the increase of norepinephrine, you may also experience insomnia, dizziness, somnolence, dry mouth, muscle weakness, sweating, anorexia, constipation or diarrhea, and nervousness. Less common side effects are going to be a decreased libido, tremors, vomiting, blurred or abnormal vision, hypertension, and uh, palpitations. Some rare side effects that may occur include increased risk of bleeding, suicidal ideation, serotonin syndrome, and seizures. Now I do cover the rare and dangerous side effects of antidepressants a little more thoroughly in this video. So if you missed that video, go ahead and check that out. Some contraindications to consider when you're taking venlafaxine include, if you have uncontrolled angle closure glycoma, this medication would not be for you. If you're taking an MAOI, which also includes the antibiotic linzolid or Zyvox, this would put you at an increased risk for serotonin syndrome and hypertensive crisis, and so therefore it's completely contraindicated. So those are the top five things that you need to know about venlafaxine. Is there anything else that you would like to add to that list? Go ahead and drop it down in the comment section below, and we learn from sharing each other's experiences. And so I thank you for watching, I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week.